February 20, 2022. Second quarter, lesson number 12. Bildad misspeaks God's justice. The background scripture is Job chapter 8. Our Sunday school material is the standard lesson commentary 2021-2022. Let's start with a prayer. Lord, we will be studying Job chapter 8 regarding the words from Bildad. Be with us, Lord. Help us to understand and help us to fully comprehend your message for us through this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so here at a glance, we are now in the second quarter, covering the months of December, January, and February. The theme, Justice, Law, History. In the third quarter, this is the theme, God frees and redeems. Fourth quarter, partners in a new creation. Okay, quarter at a glance, justice, law, history. We can read here, this quarter we look at Old Testament passages that reveal God's desire for justice to characterize human relationship. Yung kagustuhan ng Diyos na malaman natin ang justisya mula sa Diyos upang maging maayos ang ating pamumuhay, ang ating relasyon sa Diyos at relasyon sa ating kapwa-tao. This was the theme in December, God Requires Justice. And these were the lessons that we, we had. All our lessons are available in Facebook or YouTube. So you can go back and go through again with these lessons. Unit 2, that was in December. The theme was God, the source of justice. And these were the lessons that we had in the month of January. Today, we are in Unit 3 for the month of February, Justice and Adversity. The third unit of the quarter explores how people who obey God can correct course when injustice has become the rule of the day. Ginagamit ng Diyos ang tao upang paalalahanan ng tao na mali na ang kanilang landas. At ito ay maituwid. And these are the lessons for Unit 3. We are now in Lesson 12 for this quarter. Bildad misspeaks God. In the book of Job, the last lesson for this quarter is also in the book of Job. Job and the just God. So let's go through the scripture. Job chapter 8. 1 to 10, and then 20 to 22. Then Bildad, the Shuhite, replied, How long will you say such things? Your words are a blustering wind. Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? When your children sinned against Him, He gave them over to the penalty of their sin. But if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now He will rouse Himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous estate. Your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. Ask the former generation and find out what their ancestors learned. For we were born only yesterday and know nothing, and our days on earth are but a shadow. Will they not instruct you and tell you? Will they not bring forth words from their understanding? 
Surely God does not reject one who is blameless or strengthen the hands of evildoers. You will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Your enemies will be clothed in shame, and the tents of the wicked will be no more. Sa Tagalog, Job 8, 1-10, 20-22, makatarungan ng Diyos. Babasahin natin ito ng katula dahil ito ay isang tula. Ang sagot ni Bildad, hanggang kailan ka magsasalita ng ganyan, ng salitang masasakit at walang kabuluhan? Bawat gawin ng, gawin ng Diyos ay makatarungan at hindi niya binabaloktot ang katwiran. Maaaring ang iyong mga anak ay nagkasala, kaya nararapat lamang ang parusa sa kanila. Ang marapat mong gawin, ang Diyos ay hanapin. Sa Kanya'y dumulog ka at ikaw ay dumaing. Kung ikaw ay taong tapat, matuwid at malinis, tutulungan ka ng Diyos, sambayan mo'y ibabalik. Kung magkagayon, ang dati mong kayamanan ay maliit na dihamak kaysa Kanya'ng ibibigay. Magtanong-tanong ka sa matatanda at dilidilihin ang taglay nilang unawa. Buhay natin ay maiksi, walang nalalaman. Mga anino lamang tayo sa balat ng daigdigan. Dilidilihin mo ang kanilang mga aral, ang kanilang sinasabi, ulinigin at pakinggan. Hindi pababayaan ng Diyos ang taong matuwid, ngunit ang masasama, tulong niya ay di makakamit. Balang araw, pupuspusin ka niya ng galak, hihiyaw ka sa tuwa, sasayaw at lulundag. Mga kaaway mo'y malalagay sa kahiyan at ang masasama sa mundo ay mapaparam. Key text. The key text is Job 8, verse 1 and 2. Bildad the Shuhite replied, How long will you say such things? Your words are blustering wind. Okay, so what will be the aim of this lesson? You should be able, we should be able to summarize Bildad's explanation for Job's suffering. Kailangan na kayang-kaya nating istorya. Ano bang paliwanag ni Bildad sa nangyayari kay Job? Doon sa mga pigkapighatian, yung hirap na dinadanas ni Job. Ano bang paliwanag ni Bildad? Explain the error of Bildad's Conclusion, yan. Ano ba ang mali doon sa conclusion ni Bildad? Dapat malinaw yan pagkatapos ng lesson natin. Be Bildad in a role play of improved counseling of friends in distress. Yan, eh, ito naman, kung may role play, ikaw si Bildad. Pero ang sabi rito, improve Counseling of friends in distress. Yung mangyari, dispalinghado yung uh, style na ginawa ni Bildad. Doon sa kanyang kaibigan na nasa paghihirap. Paano mo may improve yan? That is the challenge to each and every one of us. This is the outline. The outline of our lesson. We have the introduction. Premise, premises, and conclusion. May premise, may conclusion. Then the lesson context, yung kabu- kabuuan, saan nakapalob itong ating pinag-aaralan. Roman numeral number one, yung verse one to four, condemnation. Roman numeral number two, may sermon, five to seven. Roman numeral number three, reflection, eight to ten. And then Roman numeral number four, 20 to 22, projection. Then, conclusion, the greatest ministry. We will cover all this in the duration of our Sunday school. Okay, introduction. Premises and conclusion. May premises, may conclusions. Okay, sino ba itong si, sino ba itong nagpauso nito? Aristotle. Aristotle, a Greek philosopher, influenced modern understanding of philosophy and rhetoric. 
Other aspects of his work focus on syllogism. Ano ba yan syllogism? It is a logic where a conclusion is required by two premises. Mayroong two premises. Kasi yan, premises, conclusion. May two premises. Major, specific, therefore, may conclusion. Tignan natin. One of Aristotle's famed syllogism. Ito yung pre- premise number one. All men are mortal. A specific premise. Socrates is a man. Conclusion. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. All men are mortal. Mamatay lahat. Si Socrates is a man. Therefore, therefore Socrates is mortal. Yun yung premise, conclusion. Ito yung paliwanag niya. The first phrase is called the major premise. Well, the second phrase is the specific premise. Ayan, di ba? So, this is the major premise. The specific premise, this is the conclusion. Yun yung philosophy ni, nang galing ito kay Aristotle. Nang galing ito kay Aristotle. In the midst of Job's suffering, his friends who lived hundreds of years before Aristotle attempted to explain Job's suffering through an implied syllogism. Ito yung merong mga kaibigan itong si Job. Nung naghihirap na si Job, dumating yung kaibigan niya, yung mga kaibigan niya, at ginamit itong principle na to. Itong philosophy ng syllogism. Tignan natin. Ito yung kanilang syllogism. Bildad went as follows. Syllogism is posed by Bildad. Only wicked people suffer. And then, Job suffers. Therefore, Job is wicked. Syllogism. Diba? Ito yung major premise, a specific premise, and then the conclusion. Yun yung ginamit nila. Ha? Itong ginamit ni Bildad. At makikita natin kung paano gumulong yung istorya. Because our lesson is based on Bildad's uh, speech. Si Bildad ang nagsasalita dito sa lesson natin. At ang kanyang conclusion, anong conclusion ni Bildad? Job is wicked. Bakit? Only wicked people suffer. Only. Diperensyado ka agad eh, di ba? Eh, Job suffers. Okay, so, in the perspective of Job's friends, the premise were true. So, it would seem to be the conclusion was valid. Yan. Ang alam nila, true yung premise. Di ba? What is the premise? Only wicked people suffer. Oh, immediately, we see that this is not true. But, yung mga kaibigan ni Job, paniwala sila dyan sa dalawang premise na yan. Therefore, ang kanilang conclusion, Job is wicked. So, valid. Okay? Now, let's go to the context of the lesson. The book of Job is among the oldest biblical texts and it deals with one of humanity's oldest challenges. Matandang uh, book. Isa sa mga naunang libro sa Bible, ang Job. And what is this? Ano itong challenge na to? Maintaining hope in the face of suffering. Maintaining hope in the face of suffering. Pagpapatuloy na pag pagtitiwala sa Diyos sa gitna ng paghihirap. Yun ang ibig sabihin niyan. Uh, do we continue to trust God? Yun ang ibig sabihin niyan. If we are experiencing so much suffering, yun ang issue rito. Ito yung issue rito. That is the challenge, all this challenge. The text also addresses another shared experience. The desire for justice in the midst of suffering. Ah, ito na naman. Uh, from the point of view of man. From the point of view of man. We desire justice in the midst of suffering. Okay, so. Ano bang nangyari? Ano ba yung uh, mga anong bang nangyari kay Job? Alam natin yung istorya, di ba? Yung istorya kasi dyan, eh, pinatawag ng Diyos yung mga tao dun sa langit. Kasama sa dumating ay si Satan. 
Nag-uusap sila. Sabi ng God, Did you see Job? Blameless and upright and righteous. And that is God talking. Diniklara na ng Diyos kung sino si Job. Sabi ni ng Satan, Eh, mangyari, pinapaboran mo siya. Etc, etc. So we know the story. Diba? Job was described as blameless and upright, feared God and shunned evil. John 1.1 And this was confirmed by God Himself in the latter verses. But, or rather, the continuation, Job experienced undue tragedy. Ano yung nangyari kay Job? Namatay lahat yung kanyang mga bakahan, sheep, flocks, namatay. Pati yung kanyang mga servants, namatay. Including his ten children, namatay. Sino na lang ang naiiwan? Siya na lang at yung asawa niya. And physically, he was afflicted. Ito yung istorya ni Job. Tapos, mayroon siyang boils, may pigsa sa katawan. Kaya kinakailangan dun siya sa abo mo po. That is the picture. But there is no explanation for the tragedies. Take note, Job remained faithful to God and did not sin in what he said. So, in the in this story, Job was protesting. He was asking a, an audience with God. Man to man, magdibati nga tayo, etc., etc. Parang ganun yan eh. Bakit, paliwanag mo nga sa akin kung bakit nangyayari ito. Deh, dumating yung mga kaibigan ni Job. Sino itong mga kaibigan ni Job? Bildad, Elipas, Zovar. They were shocked. Nakita nila. Ayan. So, anong ginawa ng mga kaibigan niya? Ito yung ginawa nila. Oh. They raised their voices, wept, and took a portion of mourning, remaining silent for seven days and seven nights. Walang umimik. Pitong gabi, pitong araw. Andun lang sila. Tahimik. Tahimik sila. Kasama si Job. And then, nagsalita na si Job. Ito na. Ito na yung umpisa. Nagsalita si Job. Nung nagsalita si Job, sumagot yung isang kaibigan niya, sumagot ali si Job, sumagot ali isang kaibigan niya, sumagot si Job. Sum- so nagsasagutan sila. Three rounds na sagutan. Three rounds na sagutan. Ang sabi ni Job, his suffering overwhelmed him to the point of his cursing his own birth. Buti pa hindi na lang ako pinanganak. He experienced experience no consolation and no peace. Yun yung nangyayari kay Job. In response to Job's lament, yan, his friends spoke in cycles, back and forth, back and forth, etc. Ito yung ano eh, Elipas, Bildad, each address him three times, Zobar address him twice. Yun yung kung gaano ka, Si, yung isang kaibigan, si Job ulit, yung isang kaibigan, etc., etc. Ilang beses? Yung isa ay tatlong beses nagsalita. Yung si Zopar ay dalawang beses nagsalita. Our lesson is on the Bildad's first response. Siya yung second speaker. To conclude that Job's friends were sincere in wanting to care for Job, even though their counsel was incompetent. Mali. Mali yung kanilang mga sinasabi. Pero sila ay mga kaibigan niya. Pitong araw at pitong gabi, wala silang imikan. They were sincere. But they are not correct. In response to Job's lament, his friends spoke in cycles. Ay. Okay, so that is the, that is the uh, background. Now let's go to the scripture. Condemnation. 8 verse 1 Then Bildad the Shuhai replied Sino ba tong si Bildad? Siya ay Shuhai. Ano ano ang ano ang significance ng Shuhai? Let us see. Shuhai was probably the tribal name for the ancient ancestor of Bildad. Shuhai siya. Nung araw mayroong anak, may anak si Abraham at Ketura, ang pangalan ay Shuha. 
maaaring nang dyan ang galing yung Shuhite. At si Shuhite ay, ay si Bildad ay isang Shuhite. So he could be a, an ancestor from Abraham. Alam niyo si Abraham, di ba? May second wife siya nung namatay si Sarah. Yan. Ito yung sa kanyang second wife. At marami silang anak. Sa sa mga anak nila ay si Shoha. Shoha. How long will you say such things? Your words are blustering wind. <laughs> ano bang mga pinagsasabi mo? Walang, walang halaga, walang value. Parang hangin lang ang sinasabi mo. Tignan natin. Such things, job morning, unjust nature of his suffering. Ito, nag, talagang umahagol si Job. At anong sinasabi ni Job? Unjust nature of his suffering. Take note. Bakit ako? Bakit nangyayari sa akin to? Paliwanag mo sa akin, etc., etc. Yun ang sinasabi ni Job. Job did not question God's sovereignty, but question wisdom of his friends. Job's speech culminates in a pointed protest against God. He is protesting against God. Bakit nangyayari na? Magdebate nga tayo, etc. But take note. Take note. God, uh, Job did not question God's sovereignty. Anong ibig sabihin ng God's sovereignty? That God is in control. God is in control. God's sovereignty. Pero, ang sinasabi ni Job, ni, ni Job hindi yata tama itong ginagawa sa akin. Bildad, describing Job's words as a blustering wind. Anong ibig sabihin? To Bildad, Job's words while desperate were meaningless and empty. Ang sinasabi ni Bildad, ano yung pinagsasasabi mo na hindi, hindi, hindi tama yung nangyayari sa'yo? Ha? Blustering wind. Walang laman yung sinasabi. Kaya ka nagsasuffer dahil mayroong kang kasalanan. You are wicked. Yan ang sinasabi ni Bildad. Sabi ni, ni Job, hindi ako wicked. Ang problema kasi rito, itong si Job at saka si Bildad, nag-uusap, eh hindi naman nila nalalaman yung nangyari in chapter 1, in chapter 2. Ano ba yung nangyayari? Ayun eh, yung nag-usap si God at saka si Satan. O sige, gawin mo ang gusto mo kay Job. Hindi nila alam yun eh. So therefore, ito ngayon sila. That is why Job is asking for a, you know, personal presence with God. To speak with God, etc. Ito naman si Bilad, may conclusion na siya. Kaya ka nagkakaganyan dahil makasalanan ka. Okay, let's continue. The job reeled over his multitude of losses should give us a sense of how hurtful Bilad's reply. Masakit yung sinasabi ni Job. Bakit? Nawala lang sa kanya. Pati anak ni Job namatay. Sino lang natitira? Si Job at yung asawa niya. Kaibigan niya itong mga to. Pero masakit ang mga sinasabi sa kanya. Verse 3, Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? Yeah, ito yung mga tirada ni Bildad eh. Tama naman ito eh. Binabaluktot ba ng Diyos? Ang hustisya? Binabaluktot ba ni Diyos kung ano ang tama? Yeah. Diba? Okay, let us see. The Hebrew word translated pervert means to bend, falsify, or make crooked. The primary trust of Bilda's argument, God does not bid or falsify justice. Eh, balid naman. Balid naman itong uh, sinasabi ni, ni Bildad. Balid itong sinasabi ni Bildad. Bildad's assertion is true. Oh, kita niyo? Bildad's assertion is true. God himself is the standard of justice and righteousness and he cannot violate his own character. He is just. And Job did not argue that point. Okay? So, pinaniwalaan naman ni Job yung sinasabi ni Bildad. When your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. Ayan. Talagang very rigid. Si, si, uh, si Bildad, very rigid. Walang alawan. Sabi niya, when your chil- children sinned, He gave them over to the penalty of their sin. Kaya sila namatay dahil sa kasalanan nila. Yan ang sabi ni Bildad. Bildad used, used Job's deceased children to illustrate his assumption about the manner of God's justice. 
What Bildad proposed provides an example of retributive justice. Tignan nga natin ng discussion yung retributive justice. Retributive justice argues that God blesses the righteous and conversely curses the wicked. Bildad supposed that Job's children sinned and so their deaths were the result of their wickedness. Ah, yan yung retributive justice na sinasabi. Diba? God blesses righteous and conversely curses the wicked. Wala namang question dyan. Wala namang question dyan. In the law of Moses, the promise of blessings comes with obedience. While the promise of curses accompanied disobedience. So, there is There are scriptures that uh, reinforce what Bildad was saying. However, however, ito, ito, ito naman ang maganda niyan. God sometimes works differently. He chastens the righteous in order for their future refinement. Pero, sabi niyan, mayroon ding mga ibang scripture at sinasabi rin, mayroon ding ibang scripture na, na isinasabi rin na naghihirap, nililinis upang maging mas maganda, mas maayos, mas, mas maraming fruits. Let us see. In John 15.2.3, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Pinupulan upang lalong magbunga. There is discipline. There is discipline. Tama si Bildad. Pero tama rin na naghihirap because for the purpose of disciplining. Bildad erred by assuming that Job's hardships were the inedible outcome of sin. Bildad's strong desire to speak on On behalf of God, lead him to make a sweeping assertion. Very rigid sweeping assertion. Wala nang allowance. Although, totoo, but then, that is not the whole picture. Ang ibig sabihin dito, oo nga, pero ang tao, yun lang ang nakikita. Ano ang nakikita ng Diyos? In the latter part of the story of Job, yung latter part ng story ng Job, hindi naman siya, hindi naman sinagot ng, ng Diyos yung ta- mga tanong ni Job. Ano bang tanong ni Job? Bakit? Bakit nangyayari sa akin to? God did not answer the question. Sinabi lang ng Diyos. O bakit? Alam mo bang mag-imanage yung, yung heaven? Alam mo bang i-manage yung nature? Alam mo bang i-manage yung wild? Alam mo ba, alam mo ba kung saan gagaling ang snow, etc., etc.? God was just talking about being sovereign and is in control. Yung sweeping assertions, yun yung error. Yung being too rigid. The existence or non-existence of physical and material blessings does not correlate a person's spiritual vitality. Hindi porque ito, nakikita natin na physical and material blessing. Hindi porki wala kang blessing o meron kang blessing, hindi ibig sabihin ay okay na ang spiritual life mo. Hindi ganoon ang ibig sabihin. And later on, makikita natin dyan sa ating pag-aaral. A righteous individual may inexplicably experience hardship and suffering. This does not imply God's absence or the wickedness of the individual. Maraming istorya all over the Bible. Ultimately, it was not up to Job or Bildad to explain Job's hardship and suffering. Instead, their interaction highlights that a silent presence often can provide a best comfort to those who are suffering. Yan, sinasabi dito ng ating author na hindi para kay Bildad at para kay Job na explain yung suffering. Doon sa oras na yon, mas maganda na sana na yung presence, but silence presence, yun sana ang best comfort na pwedeng ibigay ng mga kaibigan or ni Bildad in this particular, doon sa nangyayari kay Job. This is the continuation of the speech of Bildad. Urgent 
response. But if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, take note ng kanyang contention is that Job is wicked. Ito ngayon ang sinasabi niya. If you will seek God, <laughs> hindi ito hindi ito relevant kay Job because in the first and second chapter, sinabi na ng God eh, God is righteous and upright. Bildad's transition from condemnation to exhortation. Nagsesermon na siya ngayon. Di ba? At anong sinesermon niya? Magrepent ka. Para ikaw ay patawarin. And God Almighty will have respect, ay mercy. And He would and he, he would spare your life. Kumbaga, maswerte ka, hindi ka kanakasama dun sa mga namatay. Continuation of the exhortation of Bildad, yung sermon niya, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore to you your prosperous state. Yan. Yan ang sinasabi niya. Ha? Dahil hindi nga niya alam yung buong istorya eh. He built that promise that God will rouse himself to restore a truly righteous Job. Bildad proposed that the most notable way God would act for Job is through the restoration of Job's estate. God's awakening does not imply that God is unaware. The psalmist provides a reminder of ever-present nature of God as one who will neither slumber nor sleep. Yan. Pinaliliwanag lang ng author natin. Na, uh, hindi ibig sabihin nung words ni Bildad na natutulog ang Diyos. God is everywhere. Alam natin yun, di ba? God is all-knowing. God sees everything. And God is everywhere. Omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. The Hebrew word behind prosperous implies peace, safety, restoration, and return to wholeness. Bildad exhorts Job with hopes that Job can lead a restored existence reflective of a righteous life. Continuation ng kanyang sermon. Ito pa. Your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. Mayroong kang magandang kinabukasan, mas maganda kaysa dati mong buhay. Take note. Ang explanation niya rito. Bildad and Bildad's, word were, Bildad's words were unknowingly prophetic in describing Job's future. <laughs> Hindi sinasadya. Ito nga ang mangyayari sa buhay ni Job. Hindi sinasadya. Unknowingly prophetic. Verse 8. Ask the former generation and find out what their ancestors learned. Ito na naman sinasabi niya. Tignan kung ano ang mga ginawa ng ating mga ninuno, mga ancestors. Bildad's error came in assuming that the tradition they have inherited was normative. It is one thing to accept a tradition with a critical eye. Ito ang sinasabi ni, ang explanation. Ito ang explanation. Bakit mali? Bangyari, sinasabi ni Bildad na yung nakaraan, yun na ang standard, yun na ang tama. Okay lang kung talagang titingnan natin. <coughs> Ko-questionin natin. But not to the extent of accepting it as already parang uh, uh, tama na lahat. Uncritical sweeping generalization. We cannot do that. Why? Well, because we do not know the The wisdom of God. Our vision is so limited as compared to what God is saying. Yun yung dirikado, di ba? Okay lang na, okay lang na sabihin natin yung mga nakaraan with ina-analyze. But it cannot be a sweeping generalization that it is correct. The latter is what Bildad seemed to do to bolster his claim about the nature of God's justice. Verse 9 and 10. For we were born only yesterday, 
and know nothing, and our days on earth are but a shadow, will they not instruct you and tell you? Will they not bring forth words from their understanding? Previously, Job cried out, Teach me, show me where I have been wrong. In response, Bildad pointed to the teachings of the ancestors and the words from their understanding. Like Bildad, when faced with a crisis, we might be tempted to provide comfort by appealing to past experiences, whether personal or anecdotal. Ginagawa din natin itong, itong reasoning ni Bildad. Ginagawa din natin. Nag, uh, nagre-refer tayo sa mga nakaraan. But take note, ang advice ng writer, okay lang. But with critical eye. Hindi naman yung sweeping statement that this is correct. Walang mali. Okay lang na gamitin. Pero with critical thinking. The impulse to do so might arise from our feeling of discomfort and adequacy during the crisis, especially if we struggle with what to do or say. Bakit natin ginagawa yun? Eh, sa totoo lang, hindi naman talaga tayo sigurado. Nagre-refer tayo na karaan. Especially if we struggle with what to do or to say. Sa mga panahon na ganyan, ang pakiramdam mo, anong pinaka mag- ma- ano ang the best? Sabi ng ating author, just be present but be silent. In moments when we feel sense of discomfort, we can remember Bildad's approach and behave differently, choosing to be present and quiet. Be present, but be quiet. Unlike Bildad. Now we jump to verse 20, double retribution. Surely God does not reject one who is blameless, or strengthen the hands of evildoers. Bildad continued to project assumptions of God's justice. But take note, in Job 1, verse 1, Job establishes that Job was indeed blameless and upright. Eh, hindi nga nila alam, hindi nga dalawa alam ang nangyari nung beforehand. Eh. So, pinagpipilitan ni Bildad na Job was wicked. Bildad has constructed a syllogism. O yan, katulad ng syllogism kanina ni Aristotle. Aristotle's syllogism are logic arguments where a conclusion is required by two premises. Tignan natin, how is this applied by Bildad? Major premise, God does not cast away those who are perfect. God has cast away Job. Therefore, Job is not perfect and therefore needs to repent. Yun yung syllogism. Yun yung syllogism. Major, major premise kay Bildad, God does not cast away those who are perfect. God has cast Job away. Therefore, Job is not perfect and therefore needs to repent. Syllogism. Dispalingado. The problem lies in this specific premise, which everyone assumed to be true. But the narrative of the two chapters, unknown to Job and his friends, inform us otherwise. Ano yung hindi nila alam? Yung usapan ng Diyos at ni Satan. The flip side of the idea is found in the tradition of biblical wisdom literature that describes righteous experiencing God's blessing. Yan. Ito na yung mga iba-ibang angle ng ating lessons. There are scriptures which says that righteous experiencing God's blessing. Parang katulad ng sinasabi ni Bildad. The individuals are like a well-watered plant. Yan. Mabu, magandang buhay. We can see that in Job 8.16 and Psalm 1.3. Magandang buhay ng mga Righteous. Another scripture. This time, it is something else. Various Old Testament voices reflect Job's sentiment, lamenting the ways of the wicked seem to flourish. 
meron ding mga scriptures na nagsasabi na yung mga wicked seem to flourish. Even as they speak against God. What are the examples? Jeremiah 12.1, Malachi 3.15. The wicked seem to flourish. And then we see another scripture with regards to our lesson. Jesus teaching reminds us that the righteous and the unrighteous alike receive rain and sunshine. The righteous and the unrighteous alike, they receive rain and sunshine. These are things that is in the Bible. When compared to build this assumption, a fuller understanding of Scripture creates a big problem for those determined to maintain a rigid understanding of how God works. Rigid understanding of how God works. Can we really understand the wisdom of God? Verse 21, He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Continuation. Kung mag, mag, if you will repent, lalapit ka, babalik ka sa Diyos. Itong mangyayari sa'yo. Di ba? Yan ang sinasabi ni Bildad. But Bildad's implied solution that Job needs to repent follows from defective reasoning. Well, again, because Bildad does not know what happened before. Verse 22. Your enemies will be clothed in shame and the tents the wicked will be no more. Ito ang sinasabi niya, ayang mga kaaway mo, mapapahiya sila. The tense of the wicked will be no more. Tingnan natin yung analysis dito. The false logic continued as Bildad again unknowingly spoke prophetic words. Yet this time, Bildad's word addressed to his future. <laughs> Ito. Ito ang sinasabi niya na wicked yung enemies na do you cause shame, mangyayari ulit ito. But this time, it will happen to these friends of uh, Job. Sila. Sila yung magagalit sa kanila ang Diyos. At si Job ang magdadasal para sa kanila. God's ultimate length response was to affirm His own sovereignty. In general sense, this corrected builders faulty assumption. In the latter part, Job chapter, t- chapter 38 to chapter 41, yung mahabang mahabang sagot ng Diyos kay Job, hindi naman sinagot ng Job yung tanong, bakit siya naghihirap? What was the answer of God? Affirm His own sovereignty that God is in control. Parang kanina, The question, kung naghihirap tayo, what will be your stand? Are you going to continue to trust God? Are you going to continue to put your hope in God? Kung naghihirap? Conclusion, the greatest ministry. Being present to someone in the midst of tragedy presents unique challenges. Yan. Pagka merong nangangailangan ng ating presensya, bakit? Mayroong nangyari sa buhay nila. Tragedy in the case of Job. In an effort to explain the suffering, we may put too much pressure on ourselves to comfort, comfort in wrong way. In, to explain the suffering, parang sa Tagalog, magmamagaling para lang parang magsasalita na haka-haka unfounded beware Bildad's counterproductive interaction with Job remains reminds us of the best ministry we might offer imbis na maganda ang mangyari it became counterproductive sa kagustuhan ng maganda sana, lalong sumama. Counterproductive. The ministry of presence in the midst of difficult seasons. Ito dapat ang dapat gawin natin. Just be present kung hindi mo rin lang alam 
kung ano ang sasabihin. At first, Job's friends approached him in this manner. Nung umpisa, di ba? Seven days, seven nights, they were in silence. Pero pagkatapos nun, they were quick to suppose that wickedness was the primary reason for Job's suffering. Yun yung pinaka-context ng lahat ng mga kaibigan niya. Bakit naghihirap si Job? The reason, wickedness. Hindi makapaniwala si Job. Kinontest niya yun. However, Bildad's logic did not account for the entire story of how God works in reality. Wicked individuals might experience blessing, while righteous individuals might experience suffering. Ito ang totoong nangyayari. Ito ang totoong nangyayari. Wicked, wicked individuals experience blessing. Righteous individuals experience suffering. Then, why? Can we really understand the wisdom of God? In spite of us, when we don't agree, when our yung justice from our point of view does not agree with the justice from the point of view of God, question, do we continue, do we still continue to trust God? When others experience suffering, our natural response is to be with them. To be near, cry, and share in grief is an appropriate course of action to comfort the sufferer. Presence. Conjecture on God's behalf is unwise and unnecessary. Haka-haka. Sinulat ko yung haka. Conjecture. Haka-haka. Unfounded. Sitting silently with a grieving person often provides the best support. Our loving presence is the greatest ministry we have to offer those who are suffering. Our loving presence is the greatest ministry we have to offer those who are suffering. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for showing us that our comprehension about things that is happening around us is very, very limited as compared to how you see things. We believe that you know everything, that you are in control. Help us so that even in sufferings and tragedy in our life, we will hold on and continue to put our hope and trust in you. This we pray in the name of the, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Last slide. Our lesson, the last lesson for this quarter, February 27, lesson number 13. We will still be in Job. Job chapter 42. Magandang umaga po at pagpalain kayo ng Diyos. Music